All right, let's talk about expectation and what happens when the GPU market completely ignores them. On paper, the RX 970 XT was supposed to be AMD's answer to upcoming RTX 5070 Ti, a powerful card with 16GB of VRAM built to crush 4040p gaming, all for recommended price of 600 bucks. In real life, you're paying 860 just to get on. Yeah, fake MSRP strikes again. On the other side, we have got the RTX 5070, official MSRP 550 bucks. Actually, store price around 605 dollars. Still overpriced, but at least it's somewhat grounded in reality. So today, we're putting these two head to head. Not in marketing slides, not in synthetic benchmarks, but in real world performance and gaming. We tested both cards in 4K resolution across 16 modern titles to see which one actually delivers better. And to make this even more useful, we created a Google Sheet calculator based on our test results. Just enter the price you can actually get these cards for and it will show you which GPU gives you more FPS per your currency. Because in 2025, maybe it's not about which GPUs is better, maybe it's about which lie hurts your wallet lies. Let's find out. God of War Ragnarok RTX 5070 scored 94 FPS and RX 9070 XT pulled ahead with 119 FPS. A clean win for AMD, especially in cinematic action sequence. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, RTX 5070 gave 47 FPS while RX 9070 XT pushed to 55 FPS. Not flawless on either side, but smoother on Team Red. Remnant 2, tough title demanding engine, RTX 5070 pulled 56 FPS and RX 9070 XT handled 67 FPS. Smoother gameplay goes to AMD. Assassin's Creed Mirage, RTX 5070 hits 93 FPS while RX 9070 XT climbed to 114 FPS. That's a notable lead and a clear strength for AMD in open world environments. Marvel Rivals, a close one, RTX 5070 landed at 77 FPS, while RX 9070 XT came slightly behind at 74 FPS. A rare moment where Nvidia edges out. You're halfway there! Keep going! Civilization 7, strategy games love VRAM and bandwidth, RTX 5070 managed 125 FPS and RX 9070 XT pushed to 147 FPS, another win for AMD in memory intensive workloads. Dragon Age Veilguard RTX 5070 gave exactly 60 FPS, RX 9070 XT went higher with 74 FPS. That's kind of job that improves RPG fluidity significantly. FPS 
F124 high frame rate stereo 3. RTX 5070 reached 158 FPS and RX 9070 XT went even higher to 175 FPS. A negligible difference unless you're on an ultra high refresh rate monitor. The Callisto Protocol RTX 5070 held a strong 107 FPS, but RX 9070 XT nudged ahead with 114 FPS. Small difference, but consistent with the pattern. Cyberpunk 2077 RTX 5070 delivered 76 FPS with RX 9070 XT pushing up to 96 FPS. No stuttering, just a solid lead for Team Red. Next game is Eternal. RTX 5070 hits 86 FPS while RX 9070 XT reached 98 FPS. Both delivered solid performance, but AMD keeps that extra edge. Ok, really demanding title. Stalker 2. RTX 5070 posted 42 FPS while RX 9070 XT pushed to 49 FPS. Still rough overall, but MD offers a bit more breathing room. Black Meat Wukong, a demanding game across the board. RTX 5070 scored 37 FPS, while RX 9070 XT managed 44 FPS. Neither card makes the feel smooth at 4K, but again, AMD does offer a bit more breathing room. Hogwarts Legacy, RTX 5070 gave 68 FPS and RX 9070 XT exploded to 104 FPS. A decisive victory for MD. Ah, but a purse made of unicorn skin. <laughs> you wanna talk a romance? Last time I saw you with a rose was when you stuck your finger on one trying to hide a sack of galleons. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, RTX 5070 pulled off 79 FPS, but RX 9070 XT jumped ahead with 105 FPS. A clear win for AMD in wide, high detail environments. Total War Warhammer 3, RTX 5070 came in at 63 FPS while RX 9070 XT reached 81 FPS. That's a big deal for strategy fans who need smooth turns even in chaos. Across all 16 games, RTX 5070 averaged 79 FPS, while RX 9070 XT averaged 95 FPS. That's a 20% lead and it shows. So let's talk about value or what you are actually getting for your money. If you go buy the so-called MSRP or fake MSRP, the RTX 5070 costs 550 and delivers 79 frames per second. That's a cost of $6.93 per frame. 
The RX 9070 XT on the other hand was supposed to cost 600 bucks and delivers 95 FPS which brings it to 6.32 dollars per frame. On fake MSRP AMD actually looks the better deal, but let's be real, no one is buying the RX 9070 XT for 600 bucks. The real retail price is 860 dollars, while the RTX 5070 can be found for around 605 dollars. Now, if we calculate based on those real-world prices, the value flips. RX 9070 XT jumps to 9.08 dollars per frame, RTX 5070 sits at 7.63 dollars per frame. So yes, when buying at retail, the RTX 5070 is about 60% more cost-effective per frame rendered in 4K native resolution. That's not a small difference, especially if you care about maximizing every dollar spent. But there's the thing, pricing can change weekly or daily depending on country, tax, supply or just bad luck. That's why we built a simple Google Sheets calculator based on our real test results. You will find the link in the description and in the pinned comment below this video. Just enter the prices you can actually find and it will instantly show which card gives you more FPS per your currency, specific your budget. Use it because value doesn't live on a spec sheet, it lives in your wallet. Let's talk about power. Across 16 games in 4K, the RTX 5070 averaged 237, while the RX 9070 XT pulled 315 volts, about 33% more. But keep in mind, the RX 9070 XT is also about 20% faster overall. These cards aren't in the same performance class, so the higher power makes sense to a point. When we calculate the efficiency per frame, the RTX 5070 uses 3.09 per frame and the RX 9070 XT uses 3.32 watts per frame. That makes Nvidia around 7.4% more power efficient. Now, that doesn't automatically mean it runs cooler. Cooling depends on the model, but if both cards had the same cooler or same model, the RX 9070 XT would end up hotter and louder, simply because it draws, draws more power. So if you care about noise or thermals, you will likely need to pay extra for better cooled RX 9070 XT, otherwise expect more heat, more fan noise or both. In raw 4K performance, the RX 9070 XT is clearly the faster card, around 20% ahead of the RTX 50, 70 across 16, 16 games, but it also draws about 33% more power and costs significantly more in retail. And while AMD wins the FPS race, there's more to this story. The RTX 5070 brings more than just frames. You're also getting DLSS 4, and yeah, Minov FSR has made huge strides and it performs well in many titles. But let's be real, DLSS 4 is on another level, especially with those newer transform based preset J and K models. We didn't do a side by side DLSS versus FSR comparison in this video because frankly it's extremely difficult to test that fairly. FSR gives more FPS, yeah, but that's because the image is blurred. DLSS 4 maintains detail better, look cleaner and is less distracting in motion. It's not even close in visual stability. Yet many viewers might see higher FPS from FSR and assume it's better, and that's a huge misconception. Add to that that Nvidia's Nvenc encoder, CUDA cores and the broader software ecosystem and suddenly you're not just buying a graphics card, you're buying a tunnels. That's why in my view the RTX 5070 deserves about 10% more value than what raw frame counts suggest. It's not the faster GPU in the this test, but it's the more complete product. So. Here the short version, if you want the most FPS at 4K and you're ok paying extra for it, RX 9070 XT delivers better. But if you want the more efficient, better balanced experience with stronger upscaling, better software, lower power draw and more features, the RTX 5070 might actually be the smarter buy. And don't forget, the Google Sheets calculator is linked below in the description and in the pinned comment. Use it to enter your local pricing and see what makes sense for your budget, because benchmarks are one thing, but buying smart, that's where the real win happens.